And so he built a psychological experiment to probe just what is going on inside the developing minds of children. You remember Stephanie? To them, Jesse's experiment appears to be a simple game. Oh, well, almost, almost simple. Yeah. So, what were the rules? Who remembers the three rules? Don't pass that line. Keep the hand behind your back. Keep one hand behind your back and gotta throw it with the hand that you don't usually use, right? What was the third rule? Throw it like that. Yeah, you gotta throw it with your back. Turn to the board. You can't, you can't face it. It's an all but impossible game to win. But Jess is not keeping score. All he cares about, as he watches from the side room, is whether the children cheat. He thinks he's alone. He thinks he's alone in the room. We want to see if he actually follows the rules. Oh, there he goes. He actually steps over the line, so he's broken one of the rules. Sort of flirting dangerously with breaking some more rules. Oh, there we go. A very egregious violation. Placing it right in the middle. Not atypical. I think most kids, if they think that they're not being watched, uh, they're going to revert to this type of behavior. With children aged six to seven, a little cheating is par for the course. But now Jesse brings in a new group of kids. There they are. He and his assistant prep them for the same game. Can't go over that line. Only this time, Jesse adds a supernatural twist. The children wearing the blue shirt, they're going to hear about somebody sitting in this chair. It might look like an empty chair to us, but in fact, we tell these kids there's an invisible woman sitting in this chair. Now that sounds a little scary, but we make her very friendly. We say this is uh, Princess Alice, and Princess Alice is a magic princess. She's got this special ability to make herself invisible. Well, maybe she's just, you can't feel her, but that doesn't mean that she's not there. She just could be invisible. All I can feel is just that's all you can feel. Most of this group of children act like they don't believe in Princess Alice. But when they're left alone, their behavior tells a different story. She's already thrown uh, all four of the balls. I don't think that she actually got any of them to stick on the dartboard. And she's not interested in cheating. I think she's being uh, pretty uh, true to the law here. Oh, here she goes. She's. This is what we see sometimes with children. They actually run their hand over the chair as though they're sort of testing or trying to feel Princess Alice. And she actually said earlier that she didn't believe in Princess Alice. But that just shows you the, the power of belief, really. Jesse has performed this experiment with hundreds of children. Hardly any of the kids who are told about Princess Alice cheat. They intuitively feel she's really there watching them. What we're really seeing here is an untarnished view of human nature. I mean, these are really young kids. These are six and seven year olds. You know, they've been told all sorts of things, but they haven't been told about Princess Alice, certainly. Jesse believes that regardless of their upbringing, children's minds are hardwired to believe in a hidden world of spirits, a place where Princess Alice or God might exist. But why do such beliefs take hold? <laughs>